All right, so let's move on to the last um, interpretation using box plot, which is variability. You can also use box plot to compare the variability of more than two sets. Well, given that you have plotted all these sets on the same axis, lah, okay? So by doing that, you can also compare about their variability. Okay, so in a box plot, you can't see what is the standard deviation of your data. You can't even see what is the variance of your data, correct? Okay, so in the sense of variability, the only measures of variation that you can see in a box plot is just your IQR and also the range. So do you still remember what is the formula for range and what is the formula for IQR? So range is the maximum value minus minimum value. Is that right? While IQR is quartile 3 minus quartile 1. And you can see that in the box plot. Am I right? So let's look at the range here. Maximum to minimum. So in a box plot, you can see range by looking at, looking at the length from your minimum value until your maximum value. So this is your range. And for IQR, you can also do the same thing. So you can see that the IQR from, for breed B is from quartile 1 until quartile 3. And same goes for breed A. The IQR is from quartile 1 until quartile 3. So by looking at the um, length of the IQR in breed B and breed A, by looking at the length of the box of breed B and the box of breed A, you can easily compare the differences in the variability between breed A and breed B. So the longer the box is, it indicates that your data has a more spread distribution. The shorter the length is, it shows that your data has a smaller variability or a smaller um, IQR. Yeah. So by looking at the box plot here, you can easily determine that breed A is more consistent than breed B because the IQR of breed A is much smaller compared to the IQR of breed B. Or you can also choose to compare the variability by using range. But of course, in terms of um, efficiency, IQR is uh, much better to use to compare about variability compared to range. Yep, I think that's pretty clear. Okay, you can easily see the value of your IQR by just looking at the box plot, just looking at the size of the box. Okay, right. So apart from that, you can also use IQR and range to talk about the distribution of, it, of your data. Okay, so this is somewhat similar to what we did in the in um, for average in in our previous slide just now. So I'm going to bring you back to the case where we partition our data into four partitions. Okay, quartile one, quartile two, quartile three. Now, can you please tell me um, from, let me see, yeah, here, from quartile one until quartile three, how many percent of the data is included in these two partitions? 50%, right? So from quarter 1 until quarter 3 is 50%. Okay, so let's take a look at quarter 1 for breed B. It is 70 liter. And what about for quarter 3? It's 78 liter. Okay, so now, well, you do understand that from quarter 1 until quarter 3, there are 50% data in here. Which means that for breed B, 50% of cows in breed B actually produces within 70 liter to 78 liter of milk in a month. Get it? Right? By looking at the IQR, you can also understand, you can also um, interpret that 50% of your data is within 
quarter one until quarter three. And you can do the same thing for uh, breed A as well. Alright, so you can use IQR and range in box plot to compare between different sets. And you can also use the IQR and range in box plot to talk about your data distribution. Okay, so I'm going to give you maybe a few seconds to digest that. Have a look at my slide. Okay, so I hope you understand my explanation on what are, meaning, what are the meaningful information that you can um, extract out of Boxplot. You know, what can you understand about your data just by looking at the Boxplot. Now, uh, I need you to know that there are few special cases of Boxplot. In some cases, we cannot use the general guideline as given in my previous slide to interpret the Boxplot. Uh, because Boxplot is not the best uh, graphical representation to describe if you have a sample size which is small. All right. So, and also the existence of outliers may also affect the box plot. Therefore, in such cases, we have to use descriptive statistics to identify the distribution of the data, of the data set. When I say descriptive statistics, um, I meant by mean value, standard deviation value, and median value. Okay, right, so um, in your slide note, you, we provide you with another example, another example that can help you to understand about uh, how to identify outliers and also from these two sets in example 1.12, you, we also provide you with the box plot and also the interpretations on the shape, on the average, on the variability and also on the range for you to study and read and you have a discussion among your friends and if you have any questions then please raise it up to your lecturers okay if you have any questions just contact your lecturers and please try out some of these exercises that is included in your slide note okay i think that'll be all for the video today so thank you for listening and um have a nice day bye